So, Jenks, obviously Aaron <laughs> Rodgers can bring something to the table that the New York Jets have not had in quite some time, and that is good quarterback play. In fact, if he even brings mediocre quarterback play, it will be eons better than what we've seen in the past few years in New York. So looking at the Jets this year, I feel like there is a lot of potential. And if you like the Jets to win the AFC East, they have the second shortest odds. They're plus 180 behind the Bills. To win the AFC, they're 10 to 1. And to win the Super Bowl, they're 22 to 1. So... What are your overall thoughts on the Jets this year? Are you high on this team or are you not so high on the Jets? You know what? I like that I'm talking Jets while I'm also talking to Double D in the chat about vaping. (laughs) You know what? You need to vape a little bit if you want to talk about the Jets. You know why? Because the Jets are a team, Chelsea, that I just want to sit back and watch. I I honestly, I don't want to bet on the Jets, and you said this when we previewed the Jets previously, which is they're kind of like that stock where, you know, they're either hit or miss. You don't know what you're going to get with them. They could pop. They could be incredible. And then the bottom could drop out. And so for me, just because of all the storylines, and I I will admit, and I was going to ask this to you too, it's hard for me as someone who – who is I, honestly I'm exhausted with Aaron Rodgers. I'm I'm fascinated to see how he's going to perform this season on the football field, but it's been a full 2 years or at least a year and a half of hearing all of his thoughts, where he's traveling, what he's thinking, where he's going to go, his political opinions. Like I don't care any longer. What I want is for you to play some football. But I the reason why I say all of that is that I think that sort of clouded my judgment here because he's always in the headlines because I've kind of been put off by it that I have a hard time looking at the Jets objectively and saying, okay, let me strip all of that aside and look at Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback, and how he's going to perform this season. And at the end of the day, I just don't know. And I said earlier, and I kind of felt dumb saying this, Aaron Rodgers has to be great for the Jets to be great. Well, and he would say, well, dude, he's the quarterback. Of course, your quarterback needs to be great. That's not necessarily... The truth, though, because you can there are situations like with the Niners where Brock Purdy can sort of drive the car. I don't think Mm -hmm. he gets enough credit, but still be average or above average and the team can still be great. But I think for the Jets in particular, because they just haven't gotten any quarterback play at all with Zach Wilson, because that line is a little bit suspect and because they've gone 13 years without making the playoffs that. He really does need to be great, especially in that division. He can't just be, hey, he's still pretty good. He has to be great for the Jets to actually make a run here based on the talent around him. And that's just too much of a roll of the dice for me right now to want to place any bets on the Jets. I just want to sit back and say, all right, what do you guys have? Well, because let me qualify by saying this. I don't think the Jets have nearly as much talent as the San Francisco 49ers. And that's not a hot take. But they do have some top-end talent. And I think that's what makes them really exciting. Because over the past couple years, number one, we've seen their defense has been really solid under under Robert Sala, who is a defensive-minded head coach. And then you have the young guys who have performed well beyond expectations who have really carried the load. And Bree Saul and Garrett Wilson and Sauce Gardner. Like, you couldn't have drafted any better for those guys. Those are looking like generational players right now for the Jets. Like, maybe they're not Hall of Famers, but still, they have been pretty damn good for young guys playing for a team that's very average. So I think if you add in Aaron Rodgers, I'm not sure if he even has to be, like, the best quarterback in the AFC to Mm -hmm. win this division. But I do think if we get something good out of Aaron Rodgers, this team has really high-end potential. And in the betting world, these are the teams you kind of want to look for. The teams that, okay, maybe they fall flat on their face, but they could upend some of the best teams in the AFC. Yes, the AFC is very tough, but I feel like you bet on the Jets one of two ways. You either say this is a Jets team that's going to win the AFC at 10-1, to or you bet on them not to make the playoffs at all for plus 125. Because here's the thing, when you play in a big market like New York, if the wheels fall off, it feels... Like, they absolutely crumble beneath you. And you know the media is not going to go easy on Aaron Rodgers. And we've seen Aaron Rodgers under pressure from the media, Mm -hmm. and he does not do well under this type of pressure. So, Jenks, can I talk you in 
to the Jets missing the playoffs at plus 125? Uh, mm, I don't I don't want to touch the Jets. <sighs> Maybe though. Here I, I like the Dolphins. I've said this and I'll just I'm going to keep banging the drum here. I know we've heard from experts J-Rod was on this show few days ago and he knows the Dolphins more than I do and he was saying you know that defense is a little suspect I happen to think the Dolphins defense is going to surprise us this season so to me when I look at the Dolphins I think man if that defense improves I think Tua gets his money that offense is unbelievable it's only going to get better I think I think the Dolphins are a real threat the Jets do have a great defense but uh, offensively I still worry about them and if the division weren't so competitive then Maybe I am talking myself into the Jets not to make it playoffs. But Aaron Rodgers is, again, he's such a, not just a lightning rod, but the pendulum can swing, I think, either very much in the Jets' favor Mm -hmm. or very much against them. I I feel like they're... The the very the variable when it comes to the Jets is such a it's just such like a large swath. It's that volatile. Not, yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm looking for. So it's just so volatile there that I I'm not quite sure that I want to place any money on a team that is so volatile where I can see a lot of different scenarios playing out in ways that have a lot of different outcomes. And I'm I'm not quite sure that when it comes to all the bets you can make in the NFL, all the teams that you can look at, that I want to put my money on a team where I. I truly can't figure out exact. I'm guessing. You know when you're trying to place a bet and you're like, I just can't get a read on this game. I feel like I'm guessing and I can make a, make a case for either side and that tells me to move on. That's how I feel when it comes to the Jets. Well, that's why if something is volatile, you either bet on it to be really good at a cheap price, like to win the AFC at 10 to 1, or you bet on them to be very bad at plus money. So I think it's like one of those two things, but nothing in the middle. But, Jenks, I do think there is a bet that we both agree on, and that's in the props world. Because think to yourself, okay, if the Jets finally get some decent quarterback play, Mm -hmm. Garrett Wilson is going to be incredible. Because look at the numbers that he's already put up with guys like Zach Wilson at the helm. Uh, Had over 1,000 receiving yards last year. His number this year is only a little bit higher at 1,100 and a hook. Juice to the over at minus 120. I feel like when you look at the depth chart for the Jets – it's going to be Brees Hall, who's number one. Mike Williams, yeah. they brought on, of course, somebody from the Chargers who has elite top-end skill, but somebody who is rarely on the field, it feels like. I think Garrett Wilson is going to absolutely feast this year. Oh, I totally agree with you there. And when you look at the rest of the guys, yeah, Mike Williams is a, is a very nice addition. And Gibson at the slot, I think, has a lot of potential. But, yeah, it's it's Garrett Wilson. And you know how it is with these veteran quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers, right? They want to go to the number one guy they can trust. When they get in trouble, they go to the one guy they know is going to be open. And for Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be Garrett Wilson. I, I think this number is way too low. And also, when I look at, at props like this and I look at receivers like a Garrett Wilson, he still has – more to accomplish. He can still get better. This is not a guy, I believe, at his peak just yet. He's still young enough where he can take another step and become a part of that conversation when you're talking about the best receivers in the NFL. Because one thing I don't think we talk about enough is you can have all the receiving talent in the world, but you got to have someone to throw you the freaking football.